Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Talara, and it is Monday, so you know that means it's time for Warfronts. And there was big news this week, guys. 1.7 was dropped upon us, and it brought a lot of changes to the game, including a lot centered on PvP, specifically high-level PvP. So I'm going to take a look at the patch notes, and I'm going to sort of pick out things that I think are important, and then in the comments you guys can tell me how really those things are stupid, and uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. So the first thing that caught my eye was definitely the prestige system revamp, expanding from 8 ranks to 40 ranks. And the main reason that I like that is because it gives me the ability to have a sense of accomplishment. I can sit down and I can play for a play session, maybe an hour or, or so, four or five matches uh, in the war fronts, and I can actually get a rank. And that's pretty cool. Uh, I was about three quarters of the way through rank one, which actually translated to rank two in the new system. So that's awesome. And uh, I am now rank three after playing uh, this evening and uh, trying to get my footage for this episode of Warfront. So uh, again, I like that because it gives that sense of progression. It gives you something to aim for, and we all love to reach for brass rings, even if uh, the only thing that we get by reaching one ring is access to another ring. So uh, yeah, I like that change. I think it's positive. And uh, the other change that I really like is bolstering. So they've added bolstering to kind of even things out when you're below rank 13. They did have a sort of a bolstering system uh, that was around the rank 3 or 4 range. Uh, but I like that. I like anything that makes it easier for me to not suck. And when the only thing that is really making me suck is the fact that someone is a higher rank than me, well... I don't enjoy playing during that uh, sort of an encounter when I am getting bested by someone just because they have more life than me and they can put out more damage than me. Now, 99% of the time, that's not the case. 99% of the time, I'm getting beat by someone who is of superior skill, and I can kind of live with that. But you guys know I did abandon my level 50 mage for a few weeks because of the frustration of being, of being rank 1 in a rank 8 world. So, uh, yeah, I think that that's a positive thing as well. And they're also doing more to match you with people of your rank whenever possible. So that is pretty cool. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, looks like they've done some stuff to try to encourage world PvP by reducing PvP rifts to only one active at a time in the world. I've done a couple of PvP rifts. I've found them to be interesting, although generally when I've done them, it was like me and one other guy uh, of the same faction, and we were just doing our part of the object objective, basically. So uh, I do enjoy the PvP rifts. I think they're an interesting uh, they're an interesting attempt to elicit some world PvP. I don't know that they've been extremely successful, but uh, I think this could definitely make the action hot and heavy by focusing it around one particular point. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely interested in the change to the PvP soul. That is, PvP souls are no more. Those souls have now become an additional tree in your P uh, planar attunement screen. So you can now uh, put your planar attunement points into a PvP, uh, PvP tree, which is called War, I believe. And that uh, actually just builds up your previous bonuses you could get from having a PvP soul. So uh, things like reducing your damage from players, increasing your chance to critical hit players, uh, reducing or increasing your penetration, your armor penetration, and uh, getting you to those abilities like knockbacks and uh, special abilities. So that's, that's pretty cool. I, I like that as a concept because it does give you something to do with your planar points if you are not otherwise engaging in uh, PvE a whole lot. And you do get a, a butt-ton of uh, planar attunement points from getting new ranks, as well as the ability to, uh, to turn in reinforced... Uh, reinforced crystallized insight for uh, 100,000 planar attunement. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, for 15,000 favor as well. So they do it. But but anyway, uh, yeah. So that's really cool. Um, I think it's smart, and I think it expands some of the possibilities of what you can do with uh, your builds now. Uh, speaking of builds, another cool thing that I saw was that they added these uh, pre-made builds in. And while none of them seem to be geared towards PvP, I think it's a very interesting thing for someone who's leveling up, and especially for someone who's approaching the game uh, for the first time. Even if you're coming from another uh, MMO, it can be a daunting challenge to try to get in there and actually understand what it means to spec your character. And I ran one of my characters through a pre-made spec, and they actually are as detailed as to as to bounce you back and forth between two souls. Uh, so they'll say, you know, take your first three points in this tree, then hop over to this tree and take one point, then go back to the other tree, take two more points, 
so forth and so on, and they bounce you back and forth between the two trees, trying to give you access to the best abilities at the best time. So uh, it's pretty cool. It's well done. And uh, like I said, even though it's not geared towards PvP, I thought it was worth a mention here. Uh, so they did a lot of PvP equipment upgrades. Uh, one of the coolest things that they did was they changed the way that you get PvP gear. It is no longer tied to your rank. It's now simply tied to uh, two things. One, the amount of favor you can gain, the amount of favor that you have, and having the previous tier set. So the only limit now is favor. Uh, the more favor you have, the more armor you can get. So I already had my rank 1 stuff, and I was actually able to get up to, I think it was rank 3, or 3, yeah. So I was able to get a rank 3 chess piece uh, just by virtue of the new system. So that would have been a little ways off for me. So I, I think that's a good idea. It really gives you the opportunity uh, to, again, feel a sense of progression. Uh, you know, I'm not getting a lot of rank, but I am doing a lot of... Uh, I'm doing a lot to gain a lot of favor, and now I can, boom, upgrade my armor, and I instantly feel more effective. And really, it gives you early, much earlier access to much better equipment, uh, as far as I can tell. If you come into level 50 with a crap ton of favor, having done PvP the whole time that you were leveling up, you're going to be able to instantly uh, get some high rank stuff. Because I came into level 50, I want to say with like 40,000 favor just sitting on me and uh, spin it all on some rank 1 stuff, and then still had about 35,000 favor when this change was made. So, uh, really cool uh, idea. I like the concept of it. I like the way that they're trying to tweak this stuff to really handle things well. And they, they have tied weapons to rank, which I think is reasonable. So, uh, no complaints there. But I, I like that. I like that system. I like the fact that these guys are actually uh, seemingly responding to the communities, to, to the communities. Uh, worries to the community's concerns and trying to make things a little bit better. And uh, even if this doesn't work 100%, it shows that they are trying, they are responding, and they are making this a living game. So, uh, what else do we got here? Let's see. Let's look over these patch notes. Um, oh, the break free. Uh, I think Rift, if nothing else, is uh, famous for being a smart game. And and by uh, being a smart game, I mean they watch what other games do, and when another game does something smart, the devs at Tryon are smart enough to emulate that. And they indeed did that when they gave every character a break-free ability around level 5, I think it is, in much the same way that Star Wars The Old Republic has done. So I think that's really, really cool. Uh, it made sense with the getting rid of uh, PvP souls, and I think Star Wars has had a lot of success. I did play some PvP in Star Wars before I uh, gave up my subscription, uh, before I didn't subscribe after the free month. And I think that was really successful. It felt really good going into PvP for the first time and knowing I have a break free already. I didn't have to spend any points to get it. I just got it to, just for virtue of leveling up. So I like that idea. I'm 100% on board with that. Okay, the last thing I'll talk about here is uh, mercenaries. Mercenaries seem to be getting a mixed reaction in the game itself. I had a few games where players were complaining about being made into mercenaries, but uh, eh, you know, I think that I think it's kind of cool. It will uh, it will balance out queue times on realms that have a, an imbalance. So um, I'm happy with that. I'm super happy with that. And uh, one last note: uh, where is it? Where is it? I found it. It's uh, pet damage will now will now factor into your total damage. So, uh, yeah, I'm kind of happy about that with my Necromancer because my, my pet does tend to do a, a bit of damage. Uh, so, yeah, super happy with that. The leaderboard will now reflect my pet's damage in addition to mine. So I'm actually wanting to get on my uh, uh, my Necromancer again and uh, just kind of give him a go and see what happens. See if my damage uh, numbers increase because I always felt like my damage was really, really low with my Necromancer. So uh, that'll be interesting. All right, guys, I've blathered on enough at this point. So... Uh, let me uh, let me get you guys into the game. I did decide to take a chance on my level 50 mage. I went ahead and uh, uh, went through and kind of redid, redid my uh, my healing spec, my uh, chloromancer spec. So you're going to see some chloromancer action here from me in the, uh, I believe it is the codex. Hmm. I don't really remember now. Well, let's see. All right, guys, let's get to the action. All right, guys, as we swoop into the action, let me remind you that this is my Chloromancer, my level 50 mage, a slightly reworked spec, and I'm finding that I've uh, 
run out of buttons in my normal configuration in order to use all the skills at my disposal. So you will see me doing some clicking. Uh, also, for some reason, I sat down and started uh, working on my normal hotkey configuration, and it just felt uncomfortable. So you'll see me clicking some skills that I might otherwise have used hotkeys for. Um, yeah, bitch about it if you want. Otherwise, shut up. So right away, they make a quick assault on the codex really, really fast there. Uh, and pretty much we're outclassed. They, uh, they group up, and I immediately start trying to uh, provide some damage-based healing. Uh, but they, uh, yeah, they pretty much outnumber us. <laughs> and they make quick work of myself as soon as they realize that I'm doing a bit of healing. So uh, I try to uh, sustain myself as long as I can, but I'm really getting no assistance. Uh, not on a large scale, at least from my allies. So uh, there's only so long I'm going to live using my own heals on myself and eventually they clear us out and claim the Codex. So things are not off to a very good start here, uh, but that's typical. Uh, very often it is uh, possible to come back from a rocky beginning, and that's what we're going to try to do, as they're going to three-cap us here and uh, leave us with just our statue. Hmm, so a bit of strategizing here, kind of just thinking, uh, what should we do, what should we do? Of course, I say we, but I just mean me. And uh, the first thing I, I say to myself is, I really need to move with these guys who just spawned in. You know, let's remember, uh, let's remember that I am not a Superman. I am, in fact, a healer in this case, and I'm going to need some assistance. So I switch my view just to make sure I've got at least one other person trailing me. So now there's three of us here. That's pretty good. Like that. I'm confident. So we're going to head into battle and uh, things are not going to go that well. I notice these fellas creeping up on the side, as, as guys like to do, and uh, we engage. So I probably should have pulled myself over a little closer to my allies here in order to uh, give them some healing, but... Uh, I try to use my uh, Corrosion, I believe that ability is called, to just deal a little something uh, and manage to actually take down a guy or two. Well, that's all right, but then I'm just totally outclassed. And uh, despite two saving heals, I bite it, I eat it, and I am done. So one thing I noticed there as I died, however, is that the Defiants were overextending. Uh, they had come over onto our side of the, uh, of the map, um, of the split, of the Codex uh, cliff sides there. And I'm thinking, hmm, maybe that's a mistake. I'm, I'm not I'm kind of fingers crossed here, hoping that that will prove to be a mistake. Uh, but I'm doing what I, uh, what I should do. I'm heading back towards the battle. Again, checking my six to make sure that somebody's there, waiting, give them a little bit of time to uh, actually catch up to me. Because again, I'm a healer. I'm not going to uh, do a ton of damage. And I want to make sure that I have somebody, uh, not only somebody to heal, but somebody to help and move out some damage. But in the meantime, my team actually manages to push the overextended Defiance back and take the Codex. And this will prove to be the turning point in the battle. And pretty much the rest of the video is going to take place in and around this particular spot. As you see me working to fulfill my role as healer in a defensive position here and maintaining the Codex. Because, of course, as we all know, or we all hopefully know, or are learning for the first time perhaps... Uh, the Codex is worth more points per tick than any other point on the map. So each time it ticks, you're going to get, uh, I believe it is five points for the Codex and three points for everything else. So the Codex plus one point means that you are getting eight points and therefore you are winning. Winning, yes. So someone is uh, attempting to be helpful and marks a fella up there. It's always nice when you have someone who's in the raid leader spot who, who feels like they want to take that role. Uh, sometimes they don't know what they're doing, but uh, it's always nice to have someone who actually feels compelled to try to help the team by uh, marking up some individuals. So we put this whole area on lockdown, uh, absolute lockdown. And at that point, uh, we really leave the Defiance with no other choice than to try to uh, break us by going for uh, our statue. And you'll see in a moment that they'll do that. And that's pretty, uh, right there it is. That's pretty common. Uh, that's a, a common technique and something that uh, you should be thinking about as a player. Um, this isn't like a pro tip here. This is just me kind of 
talking about how I play this map. Uh, when they have the Codex plus one, I usually try to go get their plus one. And if two or three of you can go and secure that, uh, you can hope, fingers crossed, that they will overreact and overrespond. Uh, we do not, however, overrespond. Three or four of us stay back to guard the Codex. Uh, myself and a cleric who is a healer who's being accosted by that squirreled individual. Quick look at the uh, item there just to make sure that it's not an upgrade because I'm still working on my uh, old patch 1.1 staff from the <laughs> from the world event. So uh, yeah, I'm in bad, bad need of a upgrade for my weapon. You can see my little elemental guy just harassing some dude out there in the distance. And uh, I thought about calling him back, but I've yeah, what the hell? Let my uh, let my little elemental have some fun. So again, this is uh, this is pretty much what's the, what the rest of the match is going to be like. Uh, I am playing in a support healing role, you know, so it's what you can kind of expect. I mean, I'm sticking near a damage dealer, and uh, I am sticking near a, a very important point on the map. I'm playing my role. I'm doing the things that I need to be doing. Uh, there will be an intense battle coming up later, so there'll at least be some entertainment, some payoff for this. Um, but you can see us extending out and uh, actually managing to hold the codex while also uh, putting a dent in their holdings. And uh, really, that's sort of that's sort of the uh, the sign that you are playing against a team that has started splintering. And that's not uncommon. When a team goes down a few points, um, they'll start splintering. But in this case, I don't understand why that happened because the Defiants are still within easy striking distance of, uh, of actually getting back in this. I mean, they're within 50 points right now. And uh, I'm not really sure why they sort of came apart for a moment there. Uh, but allowing us to keep the Codex really secure plus cap uh, other points is a bit questionable. Uh, it could just be growing pains. They're kind of getting comfortable with one another. Maybe too many people are, are going in one particular place, overcompensating. Uh, but they do eventually get that under control. As you will see here, they're going to go for a three cap, uh, which would, of course, put us at a disadvantage. Let's see. I'm coming in from the top. Just a little bit on their part, a little bit too much um, single person attacking. You know, he gets some backup here and a nice battle ensues, but uh, when that guy initially came down, he was by himself, he was hung out to dry, he was going to die. Uh, but what ends up happening is a massive, insane battle. My camera angle work on this is a little bit off, I apologize for that, uh, but I'm looking at the things that are important to me. I'm trying to get myself onto a good target, I'm trying to keep the heels going out on myself and my teammates, and uh, trying to do every absolute thing I can to defend this point. I'm always looking at the flag in case someone tries to make a ninja cap in the midst of the battle. And uh, this <laughs> this is a lot of flashy things going off on the screen right now. And uh, we do manage to, as you can see, uh, push the attack back. There are some guys who came around the back way and are attacking from the top, a little bit of a crafty technique there. But uh, we pushed that attack back, and that was one hell of an attack. That was a really good, well-organized attack, despite the one guy who came in, uh, in my opinion, a little bit early. Uh, they came in with a vengeance, and we got enough backup who uh, poured into the point to actually uh, keep us in control of the Codex and uh, furthermore keep us in control of the match itself. And the match continues to be uh, close despite us holding the Codex plus two. Uh, that's, of course, going to help us get a little bit of an advantage moving forward because uh, you'll notice we are getting uh, several... I'm going to be getting eight points per tick to their three, so uh, they just did uh, grab the vault, so... Uh, prior to that, we would have been getting 11 points per tick, I think. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is a good example of a match that started bad, but because of the perseverance of the team and the dedication of a few individuals to play a stalwart style of defense, we came back, and we will hopefully, barring a comeback from the Defiance, secure a victory. Uh, this is one of those matches that it's a pleasure to be a part in because it's a close match, uh, it has uh, lulls in the action, but it has some good action. And at this point, uh, all the action's occurring down on the field. A nice battle here. A uh, very unconcentrated effort coming from the Defiant team, uh, but it's making for some entertainment for my teammates down there. So I managed to get a few attacks off at some folks who were in range, but notice I'm constantly looking back at the point. I did see that, uh, that gentleman on his horse riding through in the background, so I'm aware that someone is in proximity to the point. So I keep checking back, checking back, 
checking back, always trying to make sure that I'm fulfilling my role as defender, that I'm not overextending out to some battle. Uh, yeah, bit of a fear there that takes me off the cliff. Um, yeah, just kind of feel foolish when that sort of thing happens, but hey, that's uh, that's the technique. That's what happens. You want, you want to um, use your break free before that happens. Unfortunately, I don't, uh, don't react nearly fast enough. I actually don't have my break free bound to a, uh, to a hotkey at this point, which is something that I obviously will correct, uh, before the next episode. So, uh, pop in just in time to save the point here. Uh, you gotta love that. Makes you feel like a hero when you do that. And, uh, we lay down the hard defense. Again, it's myself and a very, uh, a very good healer here uh, helping me out so uh, I almost feel like I could have switched to a damage roll uh, while we were here because I felt I feel like the cleric who was there had had everything well in hand as far as the healing went uh, but I'm trying to feel out this uh, this particular uh, this particular spec and get a better handle on it so uh, I did not make the change so now it's just elementary um, yeah this is in the bag no problem and I keep checking, you know, I, I, I stay dedicated to my uh, particular role, you know, keep in your role, keep doing what you're doing, and get a little cheer there for the uh, for the healer as I head off. I, I saw this person capping, wanted to try to be the hero again and stop the cap, but I fail, and subsequently, I am absolutely destroyed by three guys right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was me gaining a new rank, I believe, in PvP? Not sure. And uh, I am dead. There we go. So, a good match all in all. Uh, I have no complaints about that match. It went pretty well. Again, what did we learn from that match? We learned that it pays off to play your position, even if it is defensive. And it also pays off to persevere. We really just got handed our asses in the first minute of this game. But we persevered. We stuck with it. And we allowed the other team to overextend. Once they overextended, we didn't allow them to overextend. They overextended. Once they overextended, that was the end. If they had stayed on the Codex and not pushed up onto our cliffside, they probably would have won that game. But because they did that, they overextended, and we managed to take the Codex. Once that was done, we never looked back. So guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Exciting changes in 1.7. We are going to continue with Warfronts, of course. We're subbed up for another three months at minimum, and I'm really liking a lot of the changes. So you're going to see a lot more content coming from me. I'm going to do some PvE in the weeks ahead. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and as always, take it easy.